now. Listen up. Three, two, one. It's showtime. That's great. This is ridiculous. 99.3 The Truth. You can't handle the truth right now. Ooh. That was the stupidest thing I ever heard. Let's do it. Hit it. It's time for Max World. And here we go. Everybody here. Everybody here. Let's get it started. Call Matt, 244-0077, or text 809-0993. It's showtime, everybody! Showtime! Exclusively on 99.3 The Truth. Seven minutes after three o'clock on the 28th day of September in the Lord's Year 2016. I'm J. Michael McCoy. Welcome back to the radio program. Thank you, uh, Chris and uh, Frank, for uh, and, and Jebediah. Jebediah was... You kept calling on Jebediah a lot lately. Yeah, because we want him to talk about guns. He's yeah. a gun expert. Yeah, he knows a lot about guns. So, anyway, thanks for uh, filling in for me yesterday. I had, Bob and I had a, an important undercover mission <laughs> that we had to do. And I think we accomplished it, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. I had to take the criminalist with me. Not the criminal, the criminalist. The criminalist. I was the criminal. Hey, Bob, did you notice that you had someone filling in for you as well? Yes, I did. Did you hear that? Big time talker you, you brought in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He talked a lot. What? Mm-hmm. What? Ron Carlson filled in for Bob. Oh, on the... Yeah, Ron Carlson sat right there where Bob is sitting now, right by a different computer, but he sat behind the computer and was there to, to respond to texts and, uh, and read the texts on air. We did that a couple times, actually. Oh my, I, I missed it. I, I wasn't able to hear. That's all right. I mean, he didn't talk a whole lot. He kind of talked about as much as Bob does sometimes. Well, Bob talks a lot when you give him an opportunity to talk about something he likes to talk about. For instance, here's the, here's the opposite end. So if I were to say, Bob, tell me about your yo-yo skills. Well, when I was a kid, I used to, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but if I were to say... Tell me about how Jesus uses numbers to uh, minister to you. Oh, yeah. A lot of numbers. Yep. Triple numbers for me. Yep. Triple numbers. He yep. sees... Like 666 six, six and that kind of thing. 777, no, seven, no, seven, no. 888, <laughs> and 993, 993. Now, you, you remember what we learned on this show from John Stewart. Yes, that John Stewart knows a lot. And what was it about the 666? He said that it wasn't 666. It was 66.84273 squared divided by 12. It was 616. 616, right. That uh, the the, the sign of the devil. Drew Zahn is here also from uh, Family Leader. And uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, what's it called, 40? Focus for 40. Focus for 40. We're going to be talking about that in just a minute. But had you ever heard that in theology? That the number originally... In the Hebrew was six one six. In some place it got translated to six six six. I hadn't heard that. Although you know what really makes me nervous is uh, you were talking about the number of the devil. Oh, and we have Drew's on here. There was a little bit of a. <laughs> oh no! Well, I thought you were going to say something, so I wanted to, which you did. So I needed to introduce you. But you have nothing to do with the devil. No. Now Chris, on the other hand, yep. Speak of that little phone right there. Yep, yep. That's his. That's his devilish tool. You know, speaking of the devil, the uh, d- this is really a true story. Well, we're not we're, speaking of the devil. <laughs> oh, I was going to read you an article about the devil, but never mind. We'll talk about it later. Okay, I'd like to hear that because you know, I, I, do you have a relationship with the accuser? A relationship with him? Yeah. I no, I don't. I don't think so. You don't think so? That's one of my favorite questions to ask. Yeah, I know, and I've heard that before, and I can't remember the right answer. Yeah, <laughs> you know there is one. You know there's a right answer. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and no, I don't is not the right one. Oh <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a, man! Because if you don't have a relationship with him, you know what that makes you, doesn't it? It's pretty perfect. What? You're pretty perfect if you don't have a relationship with the accuser. Yeah. Well, you got to define the meaning of your term relationship. He owns the deed to the flesh. Um, all right, I'll give you an example. I used to live in a homeowners association. Mm-hmm. 14 houses. Okay. And we had a relationship with the HOA and its other members. Make sense? Yes. How do we mow our lawn? What are we going to do here? The lights have to be the same, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Did I like any of them? No. But I had a relationship with them. I had to have a relationship with them. Sure. We have to have a relationship with the accuser. We don't get to choose that we don't, right? Correct. So that's, that's where that question comes from. Didn't mean to put you on the spot. That's okay. Speaking of the devil, Frank. Yes. You did a good job yesterday, I heard from a listener today. Well, thanks, listener. 
But then I heard from another listener that they just can't stand it when you're on the radio. <laughs> Darn, listener. Kelly. <laughs> Kelly just Kelly can hardly handle you. But he listens anyway. Well, good. Keep listening, Kelly. All right. So this Friday, believe it or not, I can't believe we're here, 40 days before the general election. That's correct. And the family leader has put together something that they want to spread across the land. Already spreading. Okay, tell me about it. It's called Focus for 40, and it is an effort to call the church to prayer, uh, to bend our knees before we cast our ballots, to spend 40 days leading up to November 8th uh, in earnest prayer for our nation. Uh, I think you can tell by uh, the news that we see, uh, the uh, debates that we hear, the ads that we see, and really just beyond just the culture at large, what we really see uh, is in our churches, uh, among Christians, in ministries, on Facebook, such a spirit of divisiveness particular, and contentiousness, particularly around this particular election. And part of that, uh, we believe, has to be coming from the idea that we are looking at the kingdoms of men. And we're looking at the political fights that are going on. And we're saying the hope for our nation is if this candidate gets elected or this bill gets passed or that candidate gets elected. And we have got to look higher and bigger than that. Recognize our hope is not in presidents and princes, but in the king of kings. Very well said. So is there a, 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 a Facebook page, website? Is there certain things that we're supposed to pray every day? Are there, to tell me what it is. We are making this as easy as possible on anybody who wants to join us and join literally the tens of thousands of other people around the country who are going to be praying for these 40 days. What you want to do is go to if714.com. Oh, that. yeah. That's our prayer ministry, if714. Okay. So it's all hosted right there. You go to that website, if714.com. It's named after Second Chronicles 714. Which is if my people who are called in my name will humble themselves, and seek my face, and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, heal their sins, and forgive their land. It's based on that verse. If714.com, right at the top, there's a button that says, pray for the election. You push that, that takes you to a page that explains everything. And really, if you're already committed and you're saying, this is a good idea, I want to pray, you don't need to read all that explanation. Because what it does is it just encourages you to download the free, completely free, not selling you anything, no ads, phone app. And what that app does is twice a day at 7.14 a.m., 7.14 p.m. I've been on your show. We've talked about this before. Yeah, I, I have it. I have that app. I get two Bible verses every day. Well, let me it. tell you what's going to happen on Friday. Okay. Okay. On Friday, those, those Bible verses and those encouraging notes that you've been getting, and you'll keep getting right after the election, those are going to change and focus just a little bit. They're not going to get political. Don't get me wrong. But they're going to focus on... America is going to focus on our revival, going to focus on our hearts as we prepare for this election. Yeah, and those of you, uh, those of you that are watching the webcast, you'll see on your screen right now that Jebediah has put that website up and is showing you uh, what it looks like and, and how to get to it. 714.com. Yep, and if you click on that gold banner on the right-hand side there where it says pray for the election, you click on that, that takes you the specific page focus for 40 there it is right there um and uh, you scroll down you see a counter going on we're 41 days away from the election there's more information there's a video on there in case you want to share that i encourage people to do that because it's a one minute long real quick way of uh getting the word out about uh joining us in prayer and uh you watch that video two of my kids are in it i'll let you guess which ones are mine uh, <laughs> but uh, how am i going to do that well the ones with the you know the blue eyes that's pretty much mine yeah oh okay <laughs> the I ones would, that's acting thought, the best. I thought maybe there were only two kids in the video. So. <laughs> no, actually, there's several kids in the video. Uh, we got uh, people from all across, all ages, denominations, and so forth, joining us in prayer. And we've got some national partners who are helping get the word out as well. Uh, national religious broadcasters, for example. Oh, NAB. Yep. The NRB is uh, one of our national partners, and their president you know, put out a, a press release type of thing where he said encouraging people everywhere to join in this effort for prayer. Uh, we've got uh, the Family Policy Alliance, which is groups just like ours, the family leader, but in 40 different states out of the 50. Um, and we've got uh, the Newsboys, uh, the musical group. Oh, yeah. Uh, they've been behind IF 714 for a long time, and, and they're sending out letters and so forth to their supporters saying, hey, join this 40-day prayer initiative. You know what we got to do? Go ahead, Frank. Bob's got text. Um, you know what we ought to do, Chris? I'm, I'm thinking out loud here. Yeah. We ought to maybe... Uh, so, so, Drew, let me ask you a question. So, is there a specific prayer listed every day that you want us to pray? They'll come through the app. One at 7.14 a.m. and one at 7.14 p.m. 
Okay, so we ought to we ought to do that on the air starting Friday. Yeah, we can do that. That'd be good. Yeah, it'd be great. You'd have to remind me. I know. I was going to say we're going to have to put a reminder other than the app because we're not on the air at seven fourteen. Right. If we were on at seven fourteen, then app would go boom and we'd go. Oh yeah. Well, maybe maybe uh, put we it can, on the board. We can make a thing on the board. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, let's go to the Service Legends Truth text line at 515-809-0993. Robert? Jesus is perfect, and doesn't he have a relationship with the devil? Going back to our earlier question. Yeah. Um, yes. Does Jesus have a relationship with the devil? By your, by your definition, yes. Yes. Okay. But not in the way that people normally think about it. But yeah, he's, he's got a relationship. It's Adversary. an adversarial relationship, yeah. <laughs> and he was perfect. Hmm. Well, whoever that texture was now has me thinking. So you know, it was really interesting when you said that earlier to to, to, to derail the, the conversation a little bit more. Um, when you said that earlier, I thought you know the only people who don't think they have a relationship with the accuser, other than the Christians that get befuddled by that question, um, are all the people that are um, in lockstep with him. They don't think they have a relationship with him because they're not they're not aware of it. So those those folks are just going on. Um, doing the will of the accuser in their own efforts and if you ask them that they say of course not no drew says no because he's got a relationship with the lord jesus christ but it's at that point i think drew's answer now would be yes yes because he understands your question but i think once you define what a relationship is in that case yes yes Um, because we we now have an adversary before that you don't have an adversary my wife said that to me once when i asked my wife the first time if she had a relationship with the accuser no i don't have one with the accuser so it's scary. It's scary, people who don't realize that they're they're walking that way. All right, let's take a break. First break, coming out of the hour, and uh, Drew Zahn is here from The Family Leader. We'll talk more about the 40 days, 40 days of prayer starting this Friday before the election. We're coming back live. cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Hey, everybody. I brought Northern Lights pizza. And it's got Graziano sausage. (laughs) 
Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 21 minutes after the hour, 28th day of September. In the Lord's year 2016, Davy Bloom from, um, can't think of the church, Two Rivers Church, uh, will be our guest for both hours tomorrow as we will discuss deep, deep theological questions. Like, do you have a relationship with the accuser? <laughs> I want you to ask somebody that today. I want you to, I want you to some, and you probably ought to know them. I don't think you should just go to like Walmart and just walk up to somebody and say, hey, <laughs> You have a relationship with the accuser? <laughs> that's a that's a fun line. Wow, can you imagine? In a in a really crowded uh, grocery store, in line, a lot of people behind you, a lot of people in front of you. Just drop that, nowhere to run. That would be fun. Yeah, that would go over well at the atheist convention. Yeah. <laughs> Drew Zahn is here from the Family Leader. There, uh, uh, what what would you call it? Promotion? I call it a prayer initiative or a call to prayer. Okay, so we've got a new call to prayer. Starting this Friday, because this Friday is exactly 40 days before the general election. I can't, I'm so happy. I can't believe it's almost over. We, As you know, in Iowa, we're in it for so much longer than everybody else. Um, and it's called Focus, the number four, and then the word 40. Focus for 40. And if you go to 714.com... You can look at... It's if714.com. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the word if. If. From if my people who are called by my name. If714.com. And uh, you can click on it, and every day you'll get a Bible verse. And uh, uh, you you get a Bible verse anyway from 714.if714.com. You get it at 714 in the morning and 714 in the evening. And they're going to be a little more geared towards uh, prayer and focused on uh, uh, making sure that the people that walk into those voting booths are following Jesus. Well, that verse talks uh, a great deal about God's people repenting. And it talks a great deal about us turning to him and putting our hope in him. And we are so tempted during these days, especially these last 40 days before the election, when every commercial on TV is going to be political and the debates are in full swing. Mm. We are so tempted to have our eyes right down here in the mud of the political battle. Mm-hmm. And God's word says that, you know, that we are to look for our, our help comes from the hills. You know, our, our, think higher. Uh, than these things. And uh, I think specifically of uh, the story of Peter walking on the water Mm. with the big waves that came crashing in. And when he got focused on the waves, he started to say, well, that's what it's political season. These are big waves and they're coming at us from every direction. And you hear people talking political arguments everywhere you go. Church on Sunday morning, your Facebook, you can't escape it. And we need to, as Christians, have a higher perspective than this. Well, Drew, one of the things you pointed out in the first segment is that really amongst Christians, there's so many, so much division. And I'm not even talking about Christians that would be um, Democrats and Republicans. We're talking about amongst conservative Christians, there's a lot of fighting. A lot of Christians get upset with their friends that are uh, maybe voting for Trump or those that are never Trump people that are Christians. Um, we're losing that brotherly love. Well, especially online, it seems like. It, well, especially online, that's true. But th- the, the simple thought that I have on that is it ought not to be. You know, we are Christians, brothers. We're called to unity and so forth. But you walk into a, any gathering of believers today and you say those two words and it's like dropping a grenade. Donald Trump. Boom. Right. And, and, and people begin to attack one another. People begin to say, well, you're not a real this, or you must believe that, or you think that. Start putting people in categories and boxes. Such a divisiveness. And, and that is not I'm, not, I'm not saying that's necessarily Donald Trump's fault, but that is the spirit of the political age that we are right here right now. There's such a divisiveness. There is. And uh, what can unite us again? 
thinking bigger than man's political games. Remembering that our hope is not in presidents or princes, but in the king of kings. Our hope is in God, and we need to turn our eyes there. And here's the other thing, too. You spend 40 days praying before this election, you'll be much better equipped at a heart and mind level when you do go into that voting booth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me ask, Drew, uh, do you think Christians should be involved in the political process at all, number one? And if they are going to be involved in the political process. We know it's a secular process. We know that uh, it's a it's a blood sport. So if we're going to involve ourselves in it, should we complain when things don't go our way? Let me change your terms just a little bit because I like to define the difference between politics and civics or even politics and sure. government. Okay? Sure. Politics, you're absolutely right. It comes from the Latin word poly meaning many and ticks meaning blood sucking insects. <laughs> So blood sport is right. <laughs> yes. Politics is man's machinations to try to, to arrest control from one another. But government is something very different. Scriptures tell us that government is instituted by God among men and that it has the purposes uh, of, of punishing evil and commending those who do right. And it is in this country especially. You know, in many other countries around the world and throughout history, uh, the appointment of kings was something that was only done through hereditary uh, means or the hand of God. In this country, we have this unique gift. It is a gift to be able to elect and choose our own leaders. And like all gifts, we're called as Christians to steward those things that God has given us for his glory. Well, let me ask you this, because I'm, I'm tracking with you, I believe. How do you separate government and politics it begins with perspective and that's what focus for 40 is all about we have to understand that our hope is not in me beating that person wearing the other color jersey my hope for this country and my hope for this law and my hope for this process is in god and so i am called because this is a gift and maybe i'm in politics maybe i'm an elected representative but my calling is to honor god with what i do with this gift and trust him for the results not make sure that i beat the snot out of that person to get what i want well i i I generally agree with you because you know christ upholds governments i mean he told Pilate, you would have no power over me that god hadn't given you Mm -hmm. okay so god clearly upholds governments now he also sets leaders up in government and he takes leaders out of government absolutely where does the nasty guttural part of politics how did that get infiltrated into something that should government's a good thing government upholds standards and rules that we should follow how did the gutter of politics get bled into that and how do we take it out well i appreciate what you're saying you're absolutely right you said government is a good thing yes as christians we need to wake up to that government is a good thing it was instituted by god as one of the three primary social institutions of 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 social order it's a good thing but We talked earlier about having a relationship with the accuser. Every good thing Satan tries to corrupt. We know that's true about sex. We know it's true about money. It's true about government. It's true about family. It's true about everything. And when, you know, there's another scripture verse that says money is the, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil. Well, kissing cousins to money is power. And the world of government is a world of who gets to make the rules. And boy, Talk about an area where Satan from the very beginning has said, I want to change how we make the rules. You know, there is a, all kinds of influences that would corrupt the good government. So somewhere along the line, for somebody to get in power, <clears throat> they had to start promising people things or freedoms that they shouldn't have. So if the law says, thou shalt not commit adultery, somebody comes along and says, well, you know, scrap that business. We're going to offer you more sexual freedom, less restrictions, more freedom, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to offer you materialistic things to vote for us because we're the ones that's better apt to control things. That's the cesspool part of government. Yes. And, and that goes back to the garden as well. You know, there was one law at the beginning. And Satan came along to Adam and Eve and said, well, I'm going to offer you this instead. Because that ruled, you know. Well, you'll be like God if you go ahead and eat this piece of fruit. That, yeah, you'll be like God, chicken in every pot, whatever. It's the same concept. <laughs> well, that was perfect. Chicken in every pot. I mean, that's what, Frank, I just heard you say the phrase political promises. 
I think if I if I said well, I'm going to make you a political promise, you would know that I'm lying to you. Right, because political promise on its own is a lie. Right, and that's and that's I think part of where this whole uh, corruption comes from. You know, we, there's a proverb, and I don't remember what it is, where it says you don't trust somebody who winks at you, or that there, you know, there's a there's a way of saying, hey, I'll get that done for you. You know what I mean? I get that for you. Yeah, flattery. Flattery. But there's also about winking and lying and deceit and cunning in these things, and it's in the human heart. We want to do these things, and we do those things for power. And politics is the game we play. I think it was, I think it was Greg uh, Baker who was sat in here, and, and really, he may have said that very phrase. You know, politics are the games we play to get power. Civics is really where kind of government happens. That's where we care for our neighbors. That's where we pass bills that are here to protect us, to punish the wicked, uh, to uphold the righteous, that kind of thing. And, and politics is just a really gross game and as mac pointed out earlier man oh man do we get sick of it but and, and the sad thing about it is i get sick of the politics and then when the politics goes over and it becomes less attractive i stop caring about government and i stop caring about my neighbor and i stop caring about civics but and that's a bad thing too. something struck a nerve with chris during the debate that night was was the term law and order being reinstituted into our vernacular law and order why have we strayed so far away from law and order in this country i don't you know i i i i don't understand we we have we have all this illegal drug activity we have all this gang violence we have all this stuff on the streets of our country and there seems to be one party that is stirring the pot and exploiting it and another party saying hey let's have some law and order let's reinstitute the law the civic law the law of God in our country. You know, I... But Drew, see, that's where you go wrong, Frank. I mean, you're right in what you're saying, but as soon as you use the word God or Jesus sure. or Lord... Jesus in particular. You know, 51% of the people fall off the tracks because they don't want to have anything to do with a God or the God or their creator or their savior. I mean, they just don't. We have to ask the question, too, where does the law come from? Yeah. And, and how do we decide what is law? There's another scripture verse that says uh, each of them who uh, was wise in their own eyes. Right. And so we have so many people trying to prescribe laws that have no basis in anything except for their desires. And, uh, and we know that God instituted government with a purpose to, to punish those who do evil. But now how are you going to define what's evil? Well, we know that desire is not the highest law license is not liberty yeah you talked earlier about offering them freedoms yeah satan suggested in the garden he was offering freedom but what he was offering was bondage yeah exactly. and slavery drew zahn is my guest today he's with the family leader uh we're asking you to uh go to the website if 714.com that stands for uh seventh chronicle or first chronicles uh chapter seven i almost did a donald trump there uh 14th verse <laughs> if 714.com and then click on focus the number four and 40 because as of this friday we are 40 days away from the general election for the president of the united states and uh, the family leader along with drew zahn and all of us here at the radio station believe we ought to be praying i mean it's not the last thing we should do it's the first thing we should do i hate it when people say well, i guess there's nothing left but prayer why, why did you leave it to last why didn't you put up prayer first that's where you need to start yeah right start with prayer so we're going to be uh, we're going to be praying with you uh, folks listening on the radio uh, starting on Friday, and uh, you can get the Bible verses if you want to read those specific Bible verses. They're at uh, if seven one four dot com, uh, and you can also find them at the uh, focus the number four forty. <coughs> Excuse me, focus the number four, and then the word forty, and you'll get two Bible verses every day that are going to have more of a lean. Is that a way to say it well, towards we keep using that word focus okay because yeah we're, we're going to take the world right now is so focused on politics and we're going to refocus that on god all right drew's going to remain around as we talk here for a while and uh, we're going to continue to talk a little politics next uh, hour uh the folks from child serve will be here uh sharing with us the ministry that they have there and how it covers central iowa I'm J. Michael McCoy. If I haven't told you lately, thanks for listening. Love this job. Couldn't do it without you. Right here on The Truth. Yep, it's the truth. Northern Lights Pizza's amazing garlic butter makes amazing breadsticks. Now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, hy V and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. 
I'm Nicholas Wonderscheid. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the service manager. Marketing director and client relations manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate is free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still fixed right or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones the same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile. That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. <laughs> 22 minutes before the top of the hour, 3.38 on the 28th day of September in the Lord's third millennium, 2016. I'm J. Michael McCoy, back in the saddle again. Thanks for the... Little breather yesterday. Uh, Bob and I were on assignment. We were being journalists. We were getting did, the dirt. Did the tape self destruct in five seconds? It did. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! It's gone. So Drew Zahn is here from the Family Leader, and uh, this Friday, I, I don't, I don't want to scare you, but this Friday marks forty days before the general election. Ah, I can't believe it's. Well, I can believe it's almost over. It gets uh, quite exhaustive here in Iowa. Uh, I'm sure you know that from living here, Drew, but it's a different picture than where you came from because you came from Colorado. Oh, no, no. I, I have grown up here in Iowa. I'm familiar with the process. All right, so you're familiar with this. Yeah. Something else this whole year. Who would have thunk it? I mean, I, I think everybody knew Hillary Clinton would be the nominee on the Democratic side, but at one point, didn't we have 17 candidates? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, at least. Yeah. So why do you, why, Drew, why do you think that Trump rose to the top? Why, why did his cream rise better than anyone else's? Well, th there's a handful of factors that went into that. One is he tapped in early to some of the uh, key frustrations in this country, particularly our immigration laws yeah. and uh, you know uh, uh, some economic factors as well, security issues, tapped into those early, tapped into what was probably the biggest issue, which was America's general distaste for politicians in the Washington, D.C. insider game. This was a year for outsiders, at least from the Republican Party, uh, to emerge. And frankly, uh, on the Democratic Party, you know, Bernie Sanders almost pulled that off. Did he really? Well, if it wasn't for the um, the Democratic system of having their super delegates, yeah. it could have been a whole other ball game. But that really stacked the deck against him from the beginning. Um, and so, when Donald Trump tapped into that from the beginning, 
then he had a fantastic free access to the media all he wanted it's incredible how much uh he he was given uh billions and billions coverage. and billions of dollars well he's an expert at that i mean and, donald trump is is honestly a master at that just last night on pbs there's a frontline special that was covering both the history kind of the history of donald trump and hillary clinton in the spotlight and how they were covered and one of the things that they pointed out is that he has always been an incredible brand promoter i mean yeah everybody knows about stunk uh, <laughs> stunk trump stakes trump water trump towers trump on anything and we laugh at that but we all know about it. And he was an incredible an incredible promoter, and he's always been really good at that. And I think you're absolutely right, Drew. He tapped into the frustration. Even in the debate Monday night, Donald Trump uh, tapped into the frustration that people feel. He said, how many times did he say, you've been doing this 30 years, Hillary, and nothing, you've got nothing done? That line just says what everybody that feels frustrated with the system feels. It's not really about Hillary. It's about anybody that's frustrated with the system. Nothing's getting done, and he's speaking their language. He's speaking the language of the frustrated, and I think he's doing it really well. Well, as my as I told my daughter when she was young in grade school, uh, there's no such thing as a class clown if no one laughs. So using that same principle, Trump goes nowhere without a receptive audience. So I, I told Chris that one day several months ago, and, and, it, and, 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 and he started looking at it a little different, that, yeah, there's a lot of people out there listening to this. If there wasn't those people out there, Trump goes nowhere. Yeah, there was. Uh, he, he really did tap into. I think the word is zeitgeist among the intellectuals. Uh, he really tapped into this this uh, sense that we have to have something different, something new, something from the outside. And as you look, you talked about the field of seventeen Republicans. As you look at that race and how it played out, uh, there came a point when Trump's primary strategy was simply to uh, allow every one of the others to be cast as an insider. Uh, for example, I mean, uh, Cruz did so well here in Iowa, for example. But in one debate, when he and Marco Rubio got in a discussion over who voted for what on the floor of the Senate, right. that was the end. Yeah. Right there. Because Cruz was no longer an outsider. Rubio was no longer an outsider. And Trump just came right through that center lane. He's well, like, I wasn't there. That wasn't, that's my, not my thing. You sick of what's going on in Washington? You just listened yeah. to what was going on in that Washington. Was, that was brutal. Let me ask you, Brad, this question. I, I have a lot of people kind of argue with me well yeah i would have i could have accepted any number of 10 11 12 candidates but 10 or 11 or 12 candidates weren't viable how many of those 17 in your opinion was really viable candidates i can think of jeb uh clearly i think the the, the way was paid for him i think trump i think cruz i think potentially rubio absolutely I think there's only four or five of them that was legitimately viable candidates. No, I'd go six to eight, but uh, there were several uh, that were viable at one time. But uh, we're left with a situation. I'm going to go 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 back to kind of one of my my talking points earlier. We're left with a situation now where we have so many people who are discouraged by what we have left. Um, you know, some people are, are are avid fans of one party or the other of Donald Trump or or Hillary Clinton. I understand, but a good chunk. You look at the numbers. A good chunk of Americans are really dissatisfied with what we have now. And a question they're asking is, what's the point? Where's the purpose? Where's the hope? And that is again one of the reasons why we're establishing this prayer initiative at if714.com. The focus for forty. There is hope for America. There is a place for Christians in our government, but it begins when we look higher than uh, man's politics. What do you think about Ted Cruz's reflection and praying and coming to the conclusion at one point he wasn't going to go for Trump, then he went into some deep prayer and reflection about it, meditation, etc., and he decided, well, based on the choice between the two, I definitely don't want to see the country go the way Hillary is wanting to take the country. You know, here's something we need to understand. I'm going to take a break from the, again, sort of the politics of Cruz versus Trump versus whomever, but just talk about the, the, that, you know, Cruz is a brother in Christ. Right. And, right. and we all have brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ who have at one time or another during this process liked or disliked a certain candidate. Um, and we have to understand that we are, so many of us, are legitimately struggling with what is the right thing to do. And how are we going to treat one another you know, in this process? Am I going to look at my brother who says, man, I don't like 
Trump, but I can't vote Hillary. And I got to vote against her for this reason or that reason, so I've got to do this. Are we going to look at that brother with just disdain and judgment and divisiveness? Similarly. For the next 44 days, we are. (laughs) Yeah, and this is what's wrong, I'm going to say. And on the flip side, of a brother who says who looks at it differently and says, I'm not afraid of Hillary, but for my reasons of conscience and my belief, of being, I got to be faithful to God and my beliefs. I can't vote for either one of those two people. So I've got to go third option somewhere down the line. Are, are we going to hammer and beat him up and saying, forget your conscience. You got to vote for what's right for this country. That kind of arguments, those kinds of back and forth saying, you're being dumb, you're being stupid, you're unprincipled, you're etc. These are the products of getting caught up in the Peter's waves. These are the products of of being so intent on trying to make sure that this election pans out the way we want to, that we forget that no matter how we want this election to pan out, it is still God who raises up kings and takes them down. Well, I admire Mike Damastis' attitude on it when he just said he was a never-Trump guy, he was a never-Jeb Bush guy. But at one point, he just threw in the towel and said, okay, I'm going to get back to what I know I need to be doing, and that's my relationship with Jesus Christ. So he kind of abandoned that uh, never-Trump effort while that some other Christian brothers are out there. They're still on the bandwagon going, you know, full board, never-Trump. I think Mike Damascus had the right attitude. Now, I don't care how Mike votes. He can vote his own conscience. I'm perfectly fine with anybody voting their own conscience. I just don't want to see that never something to try to influence someone else's conscience. You know, and kind of to Frank's point, Drew, I've got to say that, you know, it, we, we have seen this on both sides. And I, and I, I know we, we're not really trying to bring this back up to Trump, but it is, it's more about how we treat one another. And we're seeing it from both sides. People that have embraced the Republican nominee and they're excited about that and they're vocal and they're yay. And then there are, there are Christians uh, who are so disgusted by the Republican nominee um, that they've become outspoken and they've become loud and they're throwing their Christian faith in the face of someone who wants to vote for Donald Trump and tearing them down. And it's not very Christ-like at all. All right, 13 minutes before the top of the hour. Let's uh, go to a break. We'll come back. Drew Zahn from The Family Leader is here. And we're going to continue talking with him. It's if714.com. If714.com. Sign up for Focus 440. Here, live on The Truth. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. Northern Lights Pizza, your home of the tasty crust. Our garlic butter sauce now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, Hy-Vee, and Graziano. Northern Lights Pizza. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common, everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Ten minutes before the top, 3.50 in the afternoon, live here on The Truth, 99.3. 
Glad to have you here. Davey Bloom from Two Rivers Church will be my guest tomorrow. Friday will be 15% more fun as we have uh, a lot of neat people coming in on Friday as we start our Focus 440. That's Focus, the number four, and then the word 40. And you can find out more information on that at if714.com. If714.com. You'll get an email twice a day, 714 in the morning, 714 in the afternoon or the evening. And uh, that Bible verse will help you focus on praying for the election process that we're about ready to go through. Again, 40 days. Wow. Only 40 days from this Saturday. Got to put it together. It's time. It's time. So what do you, what do you say to the hashtag never Trump people when they, when, they, when they run into you or they call you? Well, it depends on what they're saying. I mean, I, I can fully respect a person who says to me that in good conscience... I can't steward my vote, my, my, my responsibility before God to vote for this particular man. And if that's your reasoning, fine. Uh, but if you're going to come and you're going to attack and demean, if the argument comes to uh, divisive, angry name calling, etc., that's where you've got to draw a line and say, wait a minute, this, this is not where we belong. And I think for, for a lot of your listeners, I, I, I think they periodically, whether it's this show or other, or other shows or other uh, means of, of, of getting in touch with what's going on in the culture today, they will dip their toes in. They will take a few minutes to think about politics. They'll take a few minutes to think about government, but it's so painful and ugly and dirty. You called it a blood sport earlier, Frank. And so the thought is, what, what do I do with all this? How do I make sense of all this? And, and, and you touched on it, Mac, Sometimes we try everything else first and then pray. Yeah, yeah. And that's what this Focus for that 40 was thing. Me. Well, well it, it, a lot, so many of us do that. Yeah, and that's that was what, me. That's what this Focus for 40 thing is about. It's okay, you've spent some time in those dirty waters. Now let's go to God and let him sort it out. Well, there's a term uh, that came out in the 80s called the politics of personal destruction. Mm-hmm. That was the idea that if you can't win just based on your ideas and your policies, go out and bludgeon to death your opponent. Yes. That, and, that's and, what and, you're talking about, And we right? have brought that into the church. That's where, that's what makes this election so stunning is we have brought that into the church. And that's what not ought to be. The church needs to start thinking higher, thinking bigger than these human games like the politics of personal destruction. We need to turn to prayer to correct our heart. We need to repent. But it's keeping good people out of politics. There's good men and women who would like to get in politics, but they don't want to subject their, in particular, their families. It's not so much themselves. They would jump in it if it was just them. They was in the, you know, interested in. Yep. But it's their wife, it's their kids, it's their family that's going to get uh, clobbered. You know, it's interesting. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but scriptures actually refer to the uh, men and women in leadership of government as ministers of government, as ministers mm-hmm. of God in government. Don't they and still call that in the Middle East? Aren't they a minister sure. of? Yeah, yeah. They can uh, still use that phrase. In Europe, they do that. Okay. But, but I'm referring biblically. These people, just like a pastor is a minister to the church, our elected leaders are to be ministers to the government. And anytime you get into ministry... It needs to be a calling in your life because you're going to get attacked. Your family is going to get attacked. We talked earlier about that relationship with the with the accuser. Yeah. yeah, you get into ministry, you'll find out real quick how much of a relationship you have with the accuser is going to tear you down. It needs to be a calling, and and it is a high and good calling. You guys, we're talking about prayer, of course, and I, and, and one of the one of the scriptures that's often gone to in a time like this where I don't know what to do. Frank talked about this earlier. I, I don't know. Um, people go to James chapter one, verse five, uh, where James admonishes us, admonishes us. If any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generally to all without reproach and it will be given to him if you lack wisdom. And one of the things that I, I found really fascinating in, in hearing some sermons on this passage is, you know, we think of wisdom, we hear that verse, we think of divine revelation, like God, who should I vote for? And you're thinking, uh, Bob, you should vote for Bob or, you know, that's what we're asking for. But in the Jewish mind, wisdom was how do I live my life? How am I going to how am I going to live in my community? How am I going to serve my neighbors? When we think of wisdom in a Jewish mind, it wasn't divine revelation, it was how am I going to live? And that's really what you're talking about uh, to some degree here with this focus on 40. Not only are we need to be praying for our nation, praying for our leaders, but we need to be praying that we would have hearts that where we love our neighbors. 
that we love God and we love our neighbors. We have wisdom as we walk in this world, and we have to ask God to that. We have to ask God. We have to go to him for that wisdom of how to live and how to love those who are going to vote, those Christian brothers and sisters who are going to vote for Hillary Clinton. That's, that's going to happen. I think there's a lot of Christians that think that is absolutely crazy. They're going to do that with a good conscience. And yeah. how do we love those people? Yeah, well, you, well, you talked about, about um, how it's a, it's a way, how do we live? And that's where the prayer and the asking for wisdom is. You know, we don't believe that if we get enough people praying that the right person is going to get elected. You know, we don't believe that if we get enough people uh, praying that that's going to uh, somehow finally tip the scales and God's going to say, okay, I'm going to fix this. But we do believe that when you have people who are following through on that verse uh, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves turn from their wicked ways seek my face and so forth uh, that when you have people who are earnest about prayer it changes the person who is praying and you get enough people who are experiencing that kind of what we call personal revival that's what leads to cultural revival Mm, absolutely absolutely I uh, am been talking. I have been talking this past hour, and you've been listening to Drew Zahn, who is the communications director for the Family Leader. And uh, this whole seven one four. Did you guys make this up? Because this is really powerful. Uh, well, it's based on a book that our president uh, Bob Vanderplatz wrote. Wrote. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the website is if seven one four dot com. If seven one four dot com, and then click on the focus for. It's focus, the word, and then the number four, and then the word 40. And starting this Friday, uh, we are 40 days away from the general election. And uh, the family leader, as well as everybody else, is asking you, yeah, you, because it's that powerful. You know the connection you have with him. You know what happens when you draw in that breath of the Holy Spirit, and it empowers you. And it gives you peace and wisdom at the same time to do the right thing. And so you do. Well, we want you to do the right thing on Election Day. And we're not going to tell you what that is. That, that's totally up to you. I mean, I could tell you my suggestions. And it wouldn't be her. <laughs> but we should pray for others. And we should pray for organizations like the Family Leader, who has taken the time to come up with, what did you call it? I call it a promotion. Oh, a, pr- a call to prayer. Call to prayer. Uh, to ask hundreds of thousands of millions of people to say every day a prayer that they'll give to you at 7.14 in the morning and then again at 7.14 in the afternoon. They'll give you the prayer. All you have to do is read it. Well, put it on your heart first and then read it because God will hear it that way. And he'll know that you are one of millions who would like to see a revival in this country. Whether that can happen in the White House, whether it starts there or stops there, who knows? But it can happen. And it can happen because we're going to do the best and the right thing first. We're going to pray. So, Papa, thank you for this time with Drew and the family leader. And we thank you for the opportunity to pray with you. To pray with you wholeheartedly and mightily and boldly in asking you to help us pull the lever for the right person. The one you want to be president of this country. Papa, we say that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.